Hello everyone, this is Zayda Golami from Aglimatsaf Research Company and in today's video, I'm going to talk about ANOVA in Excel. So in this video particularly, I'm focused on running the ANOVA test one way and two way and then interpret the results. So if you want to know about the behind the scene formulas and equations, you can head to my two previous videos named a uh, one-way ANOVA in Excel and two-way ANOVA in Excel. I have clearly and as much as I could, I have clearly explained the formulas and functions, etc. So here for one-way ANOVA, I have three levels for my one factor. We know that in one-way ANOVA, we have just one factor. And in two-way ANOVA, we have two factors. When we say factor, we mean, when we say factors and levels, we mean that we can have one factor and then that factor could be divided to some levels. Uh, so the problem in here is that I want to see whether the increase of elevation can affect the temperature okay so i have temperature for one kilometer higher than a specific uh, elevation and then temperatures for two kilom kilometers higher than that specific elevation and three kilometers higher okay so these are my levels in here what i want to do is to run the ANOVA test in order to understand if there is a difference, there is a meaningful different difference or significant difference between any of these three categories. A tip here is that ANOVA doesn't tell you which two groups are different from each other. That needs a further test named post hoc test. But now we want just to see whether these three uh, groups are different in some ways. So let's get into data segment. And then in analysis tab, you can see data analysis. This window opens up and then I will head to ANOVA single factor. I click OK and then it wants the input range. So I will select my input range considering the labels. It's uh, organized in columns. My data is organized in columns. And then I run the labels in first row to be considered. The alpha in here is 5%. I'm OK with that. I didn't change it. My output range I want it to be in here. I click OK. And then you can see the results are shown in these tables. So at first, it's the summary table. It's count, sum, average, and variance of each group. So count my numbers, my data in each row is 30. And then the sum is the normal sum, average is normal average, and variance is sample variance. I have these data for all three groups. And then I get into ANOVA table. So in ANOVA table, I have source of variation, sum of squares, as summarized as uh, SS, DF, which is degree of freedom, MS, which is mean of squares, F statistic, P value, and F critical. And then I have a total between groups and within groups. So in ANOVA and in analysis of, ANO, uh, of variance, what we are studying is the variances within groups and between groups. What does it mean? It means that we want to study the variances in each of these groups. And then we also want to study the 
variances between each two groups. Okay, so we want to study the variations in these terms. So if you want to know um, how does this SS or MS or F in these type of things, how are these calculated? Please get into One Way Anova in Excel, my previous video, and I have clearly explained there. But now we, we have nothing to do with all these. We only have something to do with p-value. So you can see the p-value in here is 3% and it's smaller than our alpha, which was 5%. What it can tell us, so we can decide based on this p-value in here. What we can decide is that the, the, the differences are significant. So we have a significant difference between one of these two, um, you know, between one pair of these three groups. But we do not, we do not know which ones, okay? So that's for one way ANOVA and the tables, which is so simple and easy. And I know you will learn. So then we get into two way ANOVA. In two way ANOVA, you have one more factor. So let's um, say, for example, in here, if you wanted to run a two factor ANOVA, we could have, for example, um, the elevation and the let's say i don't know the land cover of um of that place you know some other factor some you know one another factor which is influential okay so we get into two way anova in here my example was that i want to i want to know whether which one of the number of rooms or the area is impactful on determining the price of a house. So I want to know which one is has some impact. Another common example that I have seen on Tuve Nova is used a lot in around the net is the impact of gender and the industry on people's salary. So we want to know whether the gender is impactful or the industry or both of them. So, so I will give more explanations when we have the tables made. So now again, I get into data analysis. And then in here, you can see ANOVA two-factor with replication and without replication. So without replication is when you have just one observations per each combination of these factors. So when I have in 500 area and one room combination, I have just one data, not these four data. Okay, and in the other combination, just this one not the, these all. Okay, so what we used in here is with replication. I click OK. My input range in here is this one. And then rows per sample for me is one, two, three, and four. Alpha is 5% and I'm okay with that. My output range is, is here. I hit OK and the tables are now made for me. So you can see we again have some tables named summary. So the first one is for these two levels and one of the levels of my first factor. Okay, so it's 500 squared meter and one room and two room. We have the count for two levels, sum, average variance so the sum in here is the normal sum of these values for here one room 500 and then for two room 500 some of these values d 
the average, also the normal averages for these two columns, and variance is sample variance for these two columns. Then we get into 700 squared meter and we just repeat all those type of things and then we get the total. Uh, so that's the total, you know, sum for one room, two room, and etc. Then we get into the main ANOVA table, which is important for us, okay? In here, you also have source of variation, sum of squares, degree of freedom, mean of squares, F statistic, P value, and F critical. But in source of variation, you have sample, columns, interaction, and within. What does it mean? What does sample mean? What does column mean? So in here, you have sum of squares, the F, etc., for sample, which is um for which is 500 squared meter and 700 squared meter and for um columns and source of variation for columns means this two one okay so one room and two room so sample is this factor and column is this factor okay so then you have source of variation for interaction. Now interaction in here is that we want to know that if these two interact with, with each other or not, that these two, um, if these two impact each other or not. For example, we know that when the area of a house is bigger, the probability of having more rooms increase, increases, okay? So if I have, let's say, 500 square meter area, it's obvious that I have less rooms than 700 square meter area. I hope it's obvious for you. And in here, we want to study the interactions and in this p-value tells us that the interaction is significant or not. For example, when we are studying the uh, impact of gender and industry on uh, people's salary, we want to know that if the gender impacts the industry that people are activate, uh, activated in. Okay, so we want to know maybe if women usually go for, I don't know, some specific industries and men usually go for some other specific industries. You know what I mean? That's for interaction. And in here we have source of variation of within groups. So that's variance within each group. As always, I do not have any important thing with this columns and I just want to head into p-value. So in here we also can decide based on p-value. Uh, you can see for sample which was let's say in here sample is area and columns was rooms. Okay what it tells us so let me just um make some changes so that you can see yeah you can see the zeros in here okay so in here you can see that the p-value for area is so much lower than our alpha which was five percent what it tells us is that the um area the changes in area has significant impact on the price uh, and this um, independent variable is significantly important for estimating the price and then we have p-value so low for rooms also another thing is that the number of rooms also is so much impactful is 
significantly impactful and influential on estimating the price of the house. And then we have a low p-value also for interaction. What it tells us is that really the area can impact the number of rooms or vice versa. We know that we cannot understand the way of um, effect, okay? The way of impact, whether area impacts the number of rooms or number of rooms impact area. We obviously know that, but way does it have, but it doesn't tell us, okay? So, um, I guess I do not have anything more to add on this topic and I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something new and I will again repeat that if you want to know more about the formulas, functions and equations behind the calculations of these things, um, head to my two other videos on ANOVA, one way and two way ANOVA in Excel. So that's it for today's video and I hope you have enjoyed. Please don't forget to like and share and subscribe and I will see you in the next video and bye.